So much of the spotlight in Formula 1 racing goes towards the Drivers' Championship, a battle between gladiators of the sport fighting for the ultimate glory in World Championship competition. Yet, what is often forgotten is the true DNA of Formula 1. It is a series that at its core is designed to be about which manufacturer or race team can engineer the most sophisticated car within an extremely tight and strict rulebook. Who can out-engineer the others? At its core, the Constructors' Championship is what Formula 1 truly is. And while the question of who built the best car is up for debate more than ever this year, what cannot be debated is that it is the Mercedes-AMG Patronus Formula 1 team who has been the dominant force in the V6 Turbo era, taking 7 championships in 7 years and well in contention for their 8th title this weekend. Today in iRacing, we get to experience the very last of the cars manufactured by Mercedes to the 2017 era aerodynamic regulations. And after my initial test drive, one thing in particular surprised me about this 1000 horsepower world championship challenging beast. This is not a difficult car to drive and I cannot believe I am saying that. This is not a car that is lighting up into wheel spin out of every single corner. It isn't super twitchy and on edge and feeling like it's going to let go at any moment and you're just along for the ride. This car is planted, it is gripped up and it hooks into the load and everything you throw at this car, it just replies back saying that it can handle it and more. It is a car that inspires confidence on all pedals and your feel through the wheel. The downforce levels are extreme as you would expect from a modern Formula 1 car, but honestly the entry speed into some of these corners takes a bit of processing in your head to understand how it's possible. But the W12 just accepts it and hugs the corners. It is unlike anything else on the simulator and I love it. Okay, so breaking news, a car designed to be fast around corners happens to be fast around corners. But what else can this car actually do? I decided to push the car a bit more now and I took it somewhere just a little bit bumpier to see how its ride control is over curbs to see if I could finally find a weakness. And amazingly, the car did handle the curbs well too, with minimal rebound on landing and barely getting unsettled under braking or traction on the rougher curbs as well. But whilst at Montreal, we finally discovered something the car doesn't do well. It does struggle a little bit with the differential in the very low speed turns 2 and turns 10, where a lot of lock is required in the steering, but at the same time, the corners are traction zones. In fairness to the car, I didn't expect it to do well here anyway, given that it is over 5 meters long. And this is just me being super nitpicky at this point, honestly, it is very little of a problem. It can more than likely be fixed as well, if you had any idea what you were doing on the setup page, which does become the car's biggest downside. The setup sheet isn't as intimidating as I'd initially predicted, but it still has several settings that are entirely unique to this car and don't appear elsewhere on the sim, so a big learning curve is still needed for this car. It is a car that will require monumental amounts of tinkering to get it in the correct window, and I think this is where we may see the car's participation come unstuck in open setup races, as it will create a bit more of a field spread but fortunately, there is also a fix setup series coming for the upcoming season as well, for those of us who don't feel like digging into minor rocket science. It even has the brake magic options, which is a very neat touch as well, unless of course, you know, iRacing adds in the Baku street circuit. Beyond the car's performance, it also brings several nice visual changes not seen before on the iRacing platform. We can see the Kawanda effect in play on the rear wing at high speeds, showcasing the lower air pressure travelling along the surface before becoming turbulent air. Secondly, we also see visual tyre degradation and graining for the first time. This is a very neat little detail, and even just taking the chrome mould release off of the tyres, taking them from shiny to scrubbed is an excellent little detail, especially as it even conforms to your cambers. And thirdly, whilst this isn't exactly the first car to have this on the sim, another neat little touch as well is seeing the different downforce levels on the vehicle, with a low downforce setting having a much narrower rear wing compared to a high downforce setting. This car is a must buy for any open wheel racing fans, and even if you're not, I'd honestly still pick it up anyway. It is an experience like no other on iRacing. 